Hi, welcome to another video on the Target Individual Program, the Target Individual Experience. So it is, I uh, believe, 8.56. Uh, I just got a call from Pam saying that, you know, Alyssa does not want to go to school, right? <laughs> so I'm like, what does that have to do with me? So she said, well, she said you was coming. I said, well, I didn't say I was coming. I said I was going to make fish cake today, and if they would like me to bring them fish cake, I will... Uh, you know, I said then, I told them that, yeah, I bring it to them. Well, you know, you got to talk to me about this. I said, first of all, I told them this when I was leaving. And also, she was on the phone. Okay? She was on the phone as I was leaving. And I never show up at her apartment without me calling her and asking her. Right? So, that again, you know, but again, because again, she's w involved with this cult and these white supremacists how they use black women okay and how they protect them right because you guys see how her apartment is it has been like this since i have stopped cleaning up that apartment and that's the way it's been okay so what they are trying to do is trying to cause a rift trying to make uh, uh, uh excuses trying to uh say well i'm not respecting her boundaries and all this other nonsense, which is all lie, okay? Again, trying to project what she does to me in terms of not respecting my boundaries most of the time and not listening to me. So she's like, oh, well, you know, you better listen to me and you got to listen to me. And again, and this is what, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm talking about when it's talking about projection, right? That she thinks, and they got her thinking that she can rule over me or, you know, uh, be her lap dog. And while I'm talking to her, you know, there the police is in the in the background with the sirens. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. So again, this is what they do. So in cursive persuasion programming, one of the things again because it's done psychologically is that you you, you as a victim of this, you, you don't get a chance to defend yourself, at least you know, <laughs> in the past. Okay. But with the advent of social media and social platform, you can defend yourself because you know exactly what's going on. If you study, you know what's been happening to you, you will know exactly what's going on. And they will try to keep their do keep up their narrative, their lies, because they have to. This is what white supremacists is. And let me give you guys a, an example. Again, I was watching a video with Dr. Maat. Right? And it's a statement that Kevin Samuels made, and he said that the ancient Egyptians were black. And all of a sudden, all these uh, these these white Egyptians in 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 Egypt want to cancel his um, his concert that he, he's supposed to have in, in in Egypt, right? Now, they know the truth. They know ancient Egyptians, right? Well, black. Before I'm talking about before the mixing of the Europeans uh, and the uh, uh, Asiatic people again who again derive from black people okay so if you study history anthropology you know um uh, environmental uh, adaptation and evolution you 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 understand you know why and even listen this this is non-disputable they're scientists particularly egyptian scientists they're scientists they're archaeologists every time they find they find uh uh tombs burial chambers in Egypt right that goes back to the first dynasty the second dynasty I just say, say the, the the first um, period or even the pre-dynastic periods right so the uh, you know you have um, the first dynasty up until the I think 11 to 12 dynasty then you have like the intermediate period and you know and you know we had the invasion of the Hyksos right so prior to that they were black and they were of different phenotype. They were of different skin complexion, but they were still black. You know, and they and they know this. They know this. They know we know this. They, they know that there's evidence of this, but they will still deny it. They will deny it, block it out of their mind, because again, this is what the, their Arab supremacy has put into their mind. Right? And again, and they're influenced by white society and white racism. Okay, when Egyptology first started, it was started on the basis of trying to cover up the fact that uh, ancient Egyptians were black. 
Okay, yes, you had now you had a mixture, but that's in the later stages. That's that's that was within the decline, and then you had the twenty fifth dynasty where, you know, Shabaka, King Shabaka, the Nubian, who reconquered Kemet, right, and then you had a period of innovation, enlightenment, all these things because he wanted to bring back Kemet to its glory days, which his ancestors ruled. Again, this is all his history. This is all historical facts, you know, but they still, you know, will lie. Even though they know the truth, they still will lie. And this is what we're dealing with here in the Western world also, particularly in America, in trying to deny black people our truth and the truth. Right? So I understand why they do what they do. I understand it. Because those who have power... And particularly with their mindset, that's exactly what they do to keep us observant, to keep us dumb, uh, dumbed down, to not know our history. Why? Because when you know your history, particularly as a black person, you have a sense of pride. And when you have a sense of pride, it means you teach your children the truth. They have a sense of pride and they grow up understanding who they are. Okay. So when they go out there in the world, they go out there in the world knowing that I'm capable of doing what I want to do. But they have to understand that we live in a world which is uh, particularly in America, which is run by white supremacy. And we live in a white supremacist society. And that's the truth. No matter how many times they try to water it down. Because we see every time black people stand up for themselves, speak the truth, they do what? They get shut down. And as a matter of fact, this is part of the subject I'm going to talk about on my next Facebook Live. See, this is why they um, uh, suspended my Facebook account for seven days. Right? It wasn't the picture that uh, I, I've, I was uh, posting about you know kkk particularly women in the kkk it was to stop me stop the the momentum right from my previous videos because you see now um because i have my sleeping medication which helps uh with my insomnia when i get up i feel very refreshed my mind is a little bit more active right uh even today this morning i was trying to i was getting some information and i was trying i was trying to read a report on um uh, a review on, on on psychological torture, but I couldn't read. You know, the you know it was like a eighty something pages. I, I I got to like about the um, just a few pages, just reading, and I couldn't do it anymore. I just I did the, the feeling. I just had like this this nervousness, this um, anxiety. You know, came up came up, and I had to stop. Okay, I literally had to stop. Uh, so that was trying to stop my momentum because the next video that I wanted to do was on how America, white supremacy in America, have been psychologically torturing black people since slavery, and it still continues today. And we see it with Carrie Urban, we see it with Kanye West, and the tactics that they use, operant conditioning, classical conditioning. So all of these things, you know, like I said, I can see how they are being used against us. Okay? I'm getting the information to actually show you guys how it for me for those who are my facebook friends actually you can go to my facebook page because you know it's it's there it's open to the public right um to show how they incorporate these things in terms of how they condition us as black people right operant conditioning reward and punishment right so how and again that coincide with with psychological torture so we are a tortured people in america even though we may not seem like it Right, we may not you may not look like it, but the way our behavior is, uh, what white supremacists do to black people who stand up for themselves, who stand up for others, you know, and even globally, you know, uh, Kevin Hart for speaking the truth. What is his punishment? Having his show, uh, they uh, trying to cancel his show in Egypt. Right, we want a punishment, so. They don't want to speak in the truth. They don't, they don't want us to learn the truth. And uh, you know, if we do speak the truth, we do learn the truth. What do they do? They hurt us uh, financially. They hurt us in the public uh, uh, opinion. Right? And again, when you look at uh, psychological torture, look at those tactics. There's... Um, 
was this that uh, it's just on I just forgot but um you know I'm, I'm not gonna get into it because it's, it's, it's too much I don't want this video to be too long because I was talking about Mick Pam I don't want to lose track of that right so like I said so when she's calling and she's like don't ever come here <laughs> you know it was fine to come there when I was cleaning no problem you know hey uh, I'm coming over today I have to there's no problem right when it's clean up her shit now that I'm not doing it and again you know me making uh, she gave the brain to the kids and again I was going to call her this morning because it's early still I'm thinking I was like you know I'll call her when she's at work and I ask her you know but now because my daughter don't want to go to school she's trying to blame me you understand what I'm saying this is the way her mind works this is how she will find to blame everybody else except for herself she will blame her daughter our kids our son you know except for herself when she when she comes home from work for the last uh, only reason why she was up last night because I was over there why because again when she needs me to take the kids somewhere or I take them to the doctor or oh, it's fine now you know what have you right understand what is being done how it's being done and how they're using particularly if you're a black person how they're using black women and, and how do they do it through the job right before you know it was welfare stuff like that. now it's through jobs now it's through uh, positions at, at jobs right and there are some of our sisters who are gullible who are easily uh, misled also because of the psychological trauma and also other sorts of trauma caused within their family caused within uh, uh, their social uh, interaction and particularly with us black men as well as we having we our, our social uh, trauma and interaction uh, amongst our family and also black women so we are a traumatized people right we have been weaponized against each other to cause trauma to each other as well as having to deal with the trauma of living under white supremacy and white racism and just because you may drive a nice car you may have a home or have you you may you know have phones or have you doesn't mean we're not we're not a traumatized people because if you look at the overall Arkham uh, program right you will understand that our minds have just developed ways to cope with it either through ignoring it either through um and that's what this is why you see a lot of black people black men and women suffering from mental illness suffering from depression okay depression when it comes to depression is because we're being psychologically traumatized but we don't even want to understand and believe that all right so anyway with her so she just started yelling and stuff like that well don't come over here yeah uh, assessment session you know, and the police is in the back, police are in the background, whoop, 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 you know, <laughs> again, you know, they're trying to create this narrative, which is a lie, and because they're in a position of authority, and there's no one to rebuke them, there's no one to hold them accountable, okay, and as a matter of fact, let me see if I can pull up that, um, let me see if I have my, uh, hold on, y'all, because, <laughs> You know, again, I, I got to show certain things, right? Because, you know, for people to really understand. For people to really, really understand. Okay? Um, so this is a study. Okay? And I want you guys to pay attention. Right? Uh, methods of torture and the body and the mind dichotomy difficulties in equating, defining torture of magnify when it comes to psychological torture as a physical and psychological may be viewed as two sides of the same coin conceptually delineating between the two poles is difficult in itself as we straddle the mind body dichotomy according to Sears the psychological impact of powerlessness fear and uncertainty for any victim of torture means there's no such thing as physical torture by itself in other words physical torture method of torture also have strong psychological effects on the victim and vice versa okay terminology used to describe 
dismissively or otherwise, the mental suffering as produced by such method reflects these interactions. Some notion such as evidence-free torture. I want you to listen to the terminology, right? Evidence-free torture. So what does that mean? It means that you can't be tortured, right, without there being any evidence. Okay? Um, emphasis the invisibility. I'm sorry, emphasize the so evidence such as evidence free torture, emphasize the invisibility of the torture, whether inflicted through physical means or not. So for example, if you're poisoned, right, you may not see any physical scars from that poison. But internally, if you look inside, you will find that, right? So whether that whatever they poison you may cause you uh, pain, physical pain, right? You you it doesn't leave any physical scars outside of the body okay um, uh, through physical means or not okay then you have uh, again non-physical torture different kind of white torture invisible torture no touch torture clean torture and again evidence free torture hands off torture mental torture torture light and psychological torture okay now listen to this. The Justice Department, in effect, created a safe harbor for interrogators if a psychologist was involved in the interrogation by the mere fact of a psychologist's involvement, the enhanced interrogation was per se safe. So all they needed was a psychologist to be there while they're torturing you or have a psychologist on board creating these sorts of... Um, psychological torture program and they automatically deem it as safe well we know it is not we know it is not <sighs> you know <laughs> uh, the enhanced interrogation per se safe effective legal and ethical there is no requirement that a psychologist even do anything of a protective nature his or her very presence Right, by def executive definition, meant that enhanced interrogation was safe, le effective, legal, and ethical. Okay, and this was the whole C um, CIA torture program, also. Right, in which uh, members of the APA, the American Psychological Association, drafted and created this the CIA enhanced interrogation torture program. Okay. So again, for people who love to not question authority, who believe everything the authoritative uh, people say, and again, these people are twisted, dark, tried personality types. Just as you have, I was watching a video on um, Joseph Mengele. Okay, on his works that he, on his, uh, you know, his experiment on twins. And again. You know, in these people's mind, under their regime, under their society, that was okay. That was ethical. Okay? It wasn't against the law. So those in power will always uh, commit evil acts. And those evil acts that they commit, they have the authority to label these things as being ethical, safe, when it is not. When people are tortured psychologically, physically, it, it has lasting scars. Okay? It has detrimental effect on the person, mental being, physical state, okay? So, societal status. It ruins their inability to interact with individuals, to have good successful relationships okay it isolate them causes mental anguish and when you everything I just read when you look at what's happening to black people in this country for the past 400 years plus we may not have change in our feet and our arms we do have a chain wrapped around our minds and when we do anything to uplift ourselves and our people what do they do? 
So anyhow, um, you know, like I said, I, you you have to as a TI, you have to study your your targeting and how they target you, how they damage you, the technology they use against you, right? And a lot of things you have to do self-reflective, even before you realize that you you became a TI to see, to really have a, a better understanding, okay? And particularly how they target you. And the method, things that they do. Like I said, you know, I would I would have believed them when this when they told me I had um, I had a delusional personality. Right? Had had it not been for every time I, you know, read an article on Malcolm X, read an article on uh, Marcus Garvey, read an article of Dr. King, read an article of uh, Dr. Kofi Muhammad, read an article by Dr. John Henry Clark, read you know get books and stuff like that. Right? And every time, they would use the police to try to deter me. Right, whenever I tried to in, in, in engage in any sort of business endeavor, they would use the police to try to intimidate me, and that was when I knew. That was when I began to realize that, yeah, this is it being done externally, for for a certain purpose. Okay, and like I said, they will use the the labeling, the psychiatric. Uh, labeling to their advantage because they're the one that's in power and they have the authority to ruin your life, to destroy your life and like I said I understand that we as black people we are traumatic, traumatized people we are people that have been tortured daily and those, that, that torture may not leave physical scars but it definitely leaves emotional scars, behavioral issues all these other things, and at times they it do lead these physical thoughts, right? Um, there was an article uh, in which um, black people who live in public housing, you know, they're they're being, they're, you know, they have an illnesses and sickness. Come to find out that they build these public housing on toxic land, and they knew this. White supremacists, white people, they they knew this. They did this purposely, just like how there was a town. Um, I forget what stated where again they build houses on toxic land and sold those houses promote you know uh, advertise those houses promote those, promote those houses to, to black people right and the whole town black people in the town you know end up having cancer and other illnesses okay that's torture right but we don't like to think of these things as that because the way how they condition our mind is to ignore these things and again this is why they try to stop my, my momentum from, you know, um, <laughs> doing the next video because it, it talks about, we're gonna, I'm going to talk about all these things, okay? So, with that being said, I'll talk to you guys in the next video.